Welcome to MMA FanCast. My name is Luke Bays, and I am joined by returning guest and friend of mine, Vince Muska. Vince, welcome to the show. What's up, Luke? How you been, man? It's been great. It's been a crazy couple months on my end, even crazier on your end. You are officially turning pro. About time, right? Yeah. Which is really, really exciting. I've known you now for a long time, um, and there was a time you were going to go pro years ago. You ended up taking a break. You're now still the striking coach at Ground Control MMA Gym. Um, and your your pro debut will be in boxing, which we'll get to, yeah. August 6th, so just two Saturdays away, at the Maryland Live Casino in Maryland. Super, super exciting. Let's jump in and first get the what's it like for you actually being within a week and a half of your pro debut no matter what it is. It's exciting, man. Um, it's obviously been a long time coming and I've had a few opportunities over the years and, uh, you know, everything has fallen through. Like the first time I was lined up for a pro debut, believe it or not, was in 2015, I believe. Yeah. Um, so obviously a lot's happened since then. Um, it's exciting, man. The camp's been rough. I mean, it's been like, I, I can say that I actually hated training for the first time in a long time, which made me love training because like training was just, ridiculously hard. I didn't have an easy round. I didn't have an easy day. Um, we're finally winding down and now like the confidence is there. The weight's low. I feel good. I'm excited. Um, the pro fight is obviously a little different as far as like the business aspect with the sponsors, with the, um, with the ticket sales and stuff like that. But um, I mean, honestly, right now, like the hard work of the training is pretty much done. I'm just excited to finally get the weight all the way off and get their way in get it done so I'm, I'm excited i'm starting to finally get excited because for a few weeks i was kind of like fuck i got like five more weeks of this six more weeks of this but um now we're good to go now i feel good now i'm ready that that makes a lot of sense in in the mindset obviously we talked last time you were on the show about you being a coach yeah. and i've i've actually seen you in the corner which is exciting for me to see you as a coach uh, you came out a couple of your fighters for two for seven fighting championships. Hopefully that happens again. Oh, yeah. um, but it's really cool because you talked about being the coach that can put people through hard rounds at knowing that they're burned and exhausted, but you do that to yourself as well. And that really helps with that connection and relationship. Now we go way back to your amateur days at which are about officially over and you fought one of my guys in a kickboxing fight and basically made it a boxing fight. Yeah. Um, at one point I had done a round by round breakdown. I think you were throwing like throwing and landing like 55 punches in a two minute round with like <laughs> one or two kicks thrown just because I guess you felt like you had to because it was a kickboxing <laughs> fight. But over the years, I know that you've actually developed from a like a very boxing heavy guy to all the way up to Muay Thai and clinch and knees and elbows and all that stuff. Yeah. So now, what does it feel like sort of getting back to just boxing, at least for now? And then what do you kind of want to do with the full range of striking and the other martial arts? So it's funny because like you were literally in the corner across from me at one point in my amateur days. And I had a lot of amateur uh, K1 fights, amateur Muay Thai yeah. um, at a lower level, at a middle level. And I thought pretty much the highest level of amateurs and Honestly, most of the time I threw my hands. Like, I mean, I would throw a few. I mean, I had an arsenal of kicks in the gym, but for the most part, like my hands opened up because of the threat of kicks, but mostly I threw boxing. Like I, I won two amateur world titles with mostly just my hands. Yeah. Um, when I fought Jordan, like it, it turned into a boxing match. Um, so it, Yeah, it, which I hated. He had such good <laughs> kicks. I was like, so stop long. boxing this man. <laughs> Kick him, you know, because he was so much longer than you. But it ended up being a great, you guys have been friends since and, and I think that's something that's special you may not have that at the pro level yeah. we definitely see it at the amateur level where opponents become friends yeah. coaches of opponents become friends with a couple exceptions but by and large that's where our friendship started yeah. and it's been great to see you blossom um, as a fighter and as a coach and just all those things um, so is that kind of where the idea goes because you've always been a kickboxer or a Muay Thai guy who's more of a boxer, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Is that where your idea came to go pro boxing? It was and it wasn't because like the last time we talked, I had the Muay Thai fight in uh, Houston, Texas. And, yeah. you know, like it started well, it was ending well, but it just a few of the things I neglected as far as the clinch and kind of scoring the kicks. Like when you were saying Jordan should probably kick me, that's 
probably the way to beat me in kickboxing because I don't acknowledge kicks as much. I kind of let them land. I've returned with that. Um, so I, I realized I was making some mistakes with how I was training for those fights. And I, I've trained with pro boxers over the years. I've had boxing coaches. I did some amateur boxing. And um, I actually won a state title back in April. And I boxed a little bit before that. Yeah. But um, the big thing was, like, I knew how to punch and I knew how to wait to work with kickboxing. But there's obviously a lot more intricacies than just straight boxing. So I actually, like, my, my current coach right now is Pat Rivera. And Pat Rivera is a world champion kickboxer. He's a private May fighter. This is my cat just running across the uh, – <laughs> That's um, that's beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. She'll be here a few times. Just a blur. She was just yeah, a blur. Just, just, that's what she does. But um, no. So my, my coach Pat Rivera, he's uh very well rounded, but his style is very that K one boxing low kick style thing, and it wasn't hard for me to transition and kind of focus a little more on my boxing. Um, about six, actually about eight or nine months ago, I got hooked up with this guy named Stephen Sparks, who's uh the Maryland of the East Coast. I believe it's the heavyweight champion. He's one of the top five cruiserweights, heavyweights in the country. Um, he's actually fighting for a regional Golden Gloves finals this Saturday. And uh, we just hit it up off through uh, some mutual friends. And we started training, sparring. I was sparring a little more boxing. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of fun to learn. Because I've always known how to punch. I've always known where to put my head for the most part. But it was kind of like refreshing to learn. It was refreshing to kind of learn why I was doing some things wrong. Like I'm doing things now that probably wouldn't work in kickboxing because of like where I'm putting my head, where I'm putting my feet. Yeah. It's like, I'm making those fast gains very quick um, just from focusing on it. So it was not really hard. Like everybody in the gym, every, all of my coaching staff was pretty excited about the idea of me transitioning to boxing. Um, Muay Thai got a little stale for me. Um, kickboxing got a little frustrated. It's hard to find fights here, man. It's hard to find fights once you get past a couple fights. And it's uh, yeah. the boxing thing was new. And uh, the last couple months have went well. I've been motivated to show up to training. I've been getting coached well. I've been getting good sparring it's been harder sparring definitely but um no i mean i i I feel like i've grown leaps and bounds and it's it's been kind of fun to kind of just take away the threat of getting kicked in the head or taken down uh, every once in a while so uh it wasn't too hard of a transition i'm still learning obviously but it wasn't like i could see myself doing it five years ago i was like i i'll probably box at some point so it's not that big of a weird change for me yeah no it definitely is not being a being across the ring from you um you know, all those years ago, you were really, really applying boxing very well in a non-boxing, I mean, it was boxing, but in a multiple uh, event. One of the things that's interesting is I, I haven't watched a lot of Floyd May- Mayweather, but I've watched enough to mm-hmm. know that some of the head placements that are very good and safe, because uh, he does a lot of like full rolls and stuff, yeah. um, you just could never even think about doing, oh, no. oh my goodness. I mean, I, oh, I remember a couple uh, boxers that would come when I was running an MMA gym. And that was like the first thing I would do. I'd tap them with the mitt every time yeah. they would duck through, you know, the rules. So yeah. it is, it is kind of fun. I'm sure for you um, to kind of have that freedom and maybe yeah. for a pure boxer to learn kickboxing or Muay Thai, they, they sometimes feel out of place because they're adding on all these skills. For you, it's almost the opposite. You learn all these skills, you're stripping them away, and it's almost more free to just use those two. Yeah. Um, there is a way to, like, legally elbow somebody in a boxing fight, though, if you throw a hook and just kind of graze. But yeah, 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 yeah. But we didn't talk about that. That's an accident. If it happens, it's a full accident. It was not on purpose. But, um, man, it's just good catch. It's good catching up with you. It's good to see that spark and that fire, that's something that uh, you'll know this name, Joe Striplin, uh, Bazooka. Yeah, yeah, Joe, right. you, you know him. And um, he's fighting for a USKA World Heavyweight Championship here in uh, September, which is just fantastic. Gary Grant, all the guys over there, they're just incredible. But I remember- That's like a good card, too. They got uh, Brad Mountain coming back, too. Oh, yeah, Brad Mountain. Yeah, yeah, Brad Mountain's coming back. Well, bigger than I remember him. I know we were sparring back when he was a well- I was going to say, <laughs> didn't he used to fight at 85 or I something, thought, I think? I think he did MMA at 55, but I mean, he's- Oh, my goodness. That's even, oh, no. that's even smaller than I thought, but yeah. <laughs> well, when your last name's The Mountain, I guess you can, yeah. you can make it work. But um, I'm bringing Joe up because this is not a secret. He said it on Facebook. Um, he used to be a pro uh, heavyweight MMA fighter, fought for the CFFC title, I think, once or twice, yeah. but was always a Muay Thai guy. I mean, he is he is a Muay Thai guy all the way through, Thailand, all that. And now he's finally 
pushing, you know, I think he's 30, about my age. I think he's 36, 37, but he is finally getting the opportunities that he should have had in Muay Thai. He was fighting. I actually went to one of his uh, MMA fights for CFFC because that was the fight he could get in MMA. Yeah. And then he had to deal with the takedown and stuff he didn't really want to have to deal with. So it is always nice to see a fighter get to fight in the discipline that they want to fight in. It's a shame that Joe has such bad luck with fights, man. Because oh. I'm with that guy. Like for, for the way he he's a big dude and like he moves so fucking well. He's so now, now it's been a couple of years, but he had taken a few years of not fighting because of everything not working out and people not wanting yeah. to fight him. And then he got I forget what organization, but he got uh, I'm sure you've seen it. He got a cartwheel kick knockout. Uh, yeah, gut check. Yeah, I saw that. that was- uh, gut check. That's what it was. It was gut check. It's a and 300 like, pound man doing a cartwheel. Yeah, wheel. yeah. <laughs> if, if, if people don't know who we're talking about, just YouTube uh, Joe Striplin and go cartwheel kick. It is, you'd think it was set up, but it was a live <laughs> pro fight. This is not staged. You would think it's set up because you don't think a big man like that going into a cartwheel and the other guy just boosh. And the guy oh, was waiting God. after the fight. I'm, I'm, Way smaller than Joe. I would tear my shoulder if I even tried that. So it's like I, the fact that Joe pulled that off. That dude's a that dude's a legend. Yeah, I would never recommend. I would never recommend a fighter. I did have a fighter once in a kickboxing fight. Actually, Joe Striplin was was refing it because this was a USKA and he used to ref for USKA. And um, it was funny because he had to stop the fight because my guy decided to do more like a capoeira kick where he put a hand down and I don't know, he was freestyling. <laughs> it wasn't what we had gone over, but Joe's like, Oh, the glove touched because in a kickboxing fight, yeah, you know, yeah. glove touch. so he had to stop it, but also it wasn't like a standing count. It was just kind of a stop and reset. So very exciting stuff. Yeah. What, what do you kind of want to get out of your pro debut? Just a, a new love and passion for boxing and then just reel off, 10 boxing wins. I mean, what's your, what's your next step? So my pro debut is going to be on a Jetter promotions, Tony Jetter. We've had a lot of conversations over the phone. Uh, he's multiple time champion in professional boxing and ton of fights. Um, very well known in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, it's given me a good opportunity. We have a lot of big hopes for things. And th- the one thing I said years ago was like, I've done a lot of the things I've wanted to do for the most part. I, I've trained with some of the best guys I, I, I've competed. I've done all this stuff. I would like to fight professionally in my hometown and I would like to see where things go as a professional boxer. I've been working hard these last over this last year, especially in boxing. And um, people have put things in my head, like, Hey, you could do this, this, and this, you could get to a show. You could win something locally as a title. Look, I have no illusions. I'm fighting a uh, Canelo Alvarez anytime in uh, boxing. I don't think I'm going to get there. I think maybe if I would started younger, maybe, but uh, I don't think I would have. Um, but I, I do know I, I have the talent to stack up with most people. And I, I know I'm getting better and I'm 29 years old, but I'm, I'm a good athlete. I'm still getting better. I'm in good shape. I'm, I'm well coached. Um, I, this pro debut, like this guy's going to be tough. He's going to, he's going to come forward. He's um, an aggressive guy. Um, I'd like to get that experience in no matter how it goes and see where it goes. I mean, like if I win, if I lose, no matter what, I like to do this a few more times. I'm still, I'm still motivated. I still, still enjoy training. Um, I, I hate dieting, obviously I'm, I'm a fat boy at heart, but, uh, every other aspect of it all, I enjoy. Um, I'm just excited to fight in front of my hometown and I'm, I'm, I've been really looking forward to this. I know this guy, whether it's a, a chess match or whether it's a banger, I'm really excited just to kind of get in there and do it. So, um, after that, I'm going to reevaluate. Like I know for a fact, after August 6th, I have a lot of amateurs coming up. I have a lot of, um, I know Sean Susser, he's, he's my 135 pro. You actually met him at 247. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a fight on LFA. I believe he's the co-main event. Um, he's a fight or two away from being on one FC or contender series. Like he's right there. Yeah. Uh, he's three and O oh, three first round stoppages. Or- and all within about a year, year and a half. I mean, they're yeah, all yeah, close yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. He's getting so much better too. And that's the thing. Um, I got, I got a, my coach, we kind of co-coach each other, Patrick Rivera. Mm-hmm. He's got a fight either at CFFC or LFA around that time. Um, he's another fight away. Um, you know, I have a lot of guys that I'm, I'm going to fully focus on coaching for a couple months after that. Okay. But, you know, after that, I, I want to see what I can do with this. I mean, obviously, like, I have to get through August 6th. But uh, right now, I still enjoy fighting. I still enjoy learning. That's the main thing I enjoy because it makes me a better coach. It makes me a better right. athlete. Um, August 6th is what I'm focused on. But after that, I'd love to do this a few more times and see where it takes me. Uh, MMA doesn't like to do MMA. Um, kickboxing, is just there's no – 
opportunities at all as a professional, it seems like. There's a couple, like, I know USK is doing like Lion fights, you know, falling apart, it seems like. But USK, gut check, they have opportunities as a professional, but it's just it's so few and far between at this point that it's like I'd rather put all my eggs into the boxing basket and see where it goes from there, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a there was a time, um, there was a time where Bill Algio, who now just had an incredible, incredible win. Good, yeah, he's great. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it was so beautiful. But there was a time several years ago where he was fighting for USKA as a pro Muay Thai kickboxer and yeah. really was really loving that. You know, that was. But is Irv still is Irv still doing USK or who's so, the who's so technically technically uh, shortly after you fought under Irv. I mentioned his name earlier, Gary Grant. Yeah, okay, that's right, that's right, I got you. Gary Grant was always around, you would have seen him, but yeah, he took over for Irv um, probably, I mean, now I, I, I don't want to get the year wrong, but probably five years ago or more. Okay. And um, and he also does all the rings and travels all over the world because he does the uh, squared circle for BFK. See, he okay. invented that. I don't know if anybody's ever watched Bare Knuckle fighting. They had, they've had <laughs> Paige Van Zandt in there. What? I had a thought about that at one point, too, when I was having the uh, fight fall through because I had the world title fight in Mexico that fell through for about a year and a half straight. I know, yeah. Um, I actually thought about that at one point. Um, that's not the smartest choice, but, I mean, it looked fun, so I was like, why not? But, um, yeah, I've watched well, it. Actually, they have a big fight coming too with uh, Michael Mike Perry and MVP, actually, in August. That's a, That's a fun fight. Yeah, yeah, they do. But you actually wouldn't have been eligible for a bare knuckle because they require everybody to have already been pros at either MMA or boxing, I believe, uh, because enough. because it was hard to get regulated. And one of the rules yeah. was which is why they end up with people sort of later in their career. I think at some point they might yeah. change it up, but not to make this a blog about bare knuckle because there's pros and cons of that. But one thing that I think has led MMA or Muay Thai type fighters to excel in bare knuckle. We've seen that with um, Lo Lovolve, Artem Lovolve, Artem um, <laughs> who beat who beat that pro boxer, you know, and I think a lot oh, of it, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of it is because they have an unlimited single plum. You know, they have an yeah, unlimited yeah. one tie or single plum, more like the K1 rules we were talking about. They let them um, work in the clinch a lot more than like traditional boxing. Yeah, it's definitely, it's interesting how they like let them work with those like, short little rabbit punch right right and they can fully pull and i think that to a pure boxer there's there's a sense of te technical difference and yeah. also a pure boxer as you're you're learning there's a sense that when you get tied up you're tying up with a different purpose you're tying up to get a break yeah yeah and, and, and you know you're not tying up to keep working so i it, there's all little nuances i i really enjoy um, having you back on the show. I like the fact that no matter what happens on August 6th, you're excited about doing a couple months of just coaching. I've often said it, I'll say it again. Coaching is a sport in and of itself. You know, um, we've seen some athletes that are great athletes and great coaches combined. We've seen opposites of that, where some are better athletes than coaches, yeah. some are better coaches than athletes. I guess Tom Brady can be anything he wants. He's going to be a GM and an owner and, yeah, and you know, go to space, whatever. But outside of that, um, it's really cool to see that you also are developing your skill as a coach and you've mentioned some of the fighters you, you guys train and train with and hats off to you and everybody at ground control. It's been great having you on the show. Thanks again. Best skills. August 6th. Can't wait to have you back on and take care. Really quick. If you don't mind, um, just a quick shout out to my sponsors, um, Exile Performance Nutrition, Life Med Institute, John's Fit Meals, for getting my fat ass in shape. Um, who else? I got Just Living Clothing Company. Uh, resilient physiotherapy for working on me throughout the camp. Um, all my training partners, Steven Sparks, my coach, Patrick Rivera, Jake Dar, Tucker Lutz. Um, I could hold you up all day. I'm excited for August 6th. I still have a few tickets left. Um, $105 are mostly what I have. Um, it's going to be a good night. Come out, watch me, buy me a few white claws after uh, the fight. Everything else is going to be a good night. Thank you, Luke. It's good to talk to you again, man. Seriously, thank you. It's been great. It's been great talking to you. We didn't give a shout out to Tucker Lutz earlier as we probably should have because he's already in the UFC, but you were pointing out in your defense, you were pointing out the guys who are the next level that can be yeah, there yeah. soon. You weren't. No, Tucker, no will, Tucker will actually be at the fight. Tucker, uh, he makes the trip down. Like he's, he's got a kid. He's got, you know, all the, uh, the, the, the dad life going on. He's got, a, he's, he's healing some injuries. He's, uh, he's actually hoping to fight in November, December, the last time we talked. 
but he's been coming down every Wednesday, pushing me in the gym. Um, just having that experience in the gym, like he's been to the next level, he's performed at the next level. Having that around has been super beneficial. And I'm glad he's willing to help me out. We've known each other since probably about 2014, honestly. So, uh, yeah. you know, Tucker's still going to make some noise. Like people forgot about him right now, it seems like, but he's going to make a lot of noise. Oh, yeah, they definitely should not. They definitely, definitely should not forget about him. He's another guy that came to 247 as a coach in Johnstown yeah. when they had the Johnstown in the same fight. Um, and it was it was really cool to see him exactly as you described, a guy that was already at the UFC at that level, but still but still committed to the guys in the gym. And I, I think that's something we talked about it last time. I think that's something that, you know, maybe five to eight years ago, 10 years ago, for sure, the big gyms were all the rage in the UFC, yeah, like these yeah. mega, mega, mega gyms. And I think it's swinging back at all levels to smaller, more technically focused gyms like yours and many others. We could, we could run out of breath naming them, but I think it's been cool to see that becoming more of a resurgence of small gyms. I, as I think you see like a lot of these big gyms, they're, to me, I mean, I'm sure the coaching has more experience at that level, but the big gyms are kind of just big sparring. Rooms. It's all the best guys you can gather and they spar. And then like, how much individual coaching do you get at a big gym? Like, I think the guys that I know, the guys like Greg Fisher, like he's a, uh, a 135er in our area. I think he's 13 and two as a professional. He trains only at his main gym in Bel Air, Maryland. And it's not a gym that anybody would know. And like, it's a big gym, but it's not a gym anybody would know in like the, the global scene. He travels six weeks at a time for his camp to train with like Jackson Wink or I'm not sure if the actual gym he trains at sometimes, but like, that's kind of the idea. You get the better sparring, but you always work with the coach that got you You're there. You always work with the uh, training partners that got you there. Uh, you get more individualized attention. I can't imagine going to like a Sanford MMA and you're just yeah. a fish in the water. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at the same time, I think, cause I've known some fighters that have come on this program and talked about going to some of those big, they are more like classes in universities, 40, 50, 60 people doing stuff. And I guess for some people that that can be good to kind of train with everybody else and kind of get a sense. I'm much more into a, a small gym. This is a guy that, uh, we just saw his gym. I'm forgetting the gym name, but he used to fight at the top level. And now he's retired. Kelly Unanson, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't know him. He's from Northern South Carolina, but his wife had a, had a great victory for 247. And they took a pro who was 0-2 or 0-3 as an MMA pro, and he got a huge win. So I forget the gym's name, but that's an example of a guy out of a not currently well-known gym who had fought at UFC and Bellator, who's now passing it on to the younger people and, and bringing up these fighters who, you know, in, in the case of the pro, I'm thinking about Justin uh, Dorsey, his, his career was looking not great at 0-2 or 0-3, gets to a different gym, gets small training out of a guy who's been there, and now his career is looking much better. So it's, it's always kind of cool, and I was making that comment at 247 yeah. on the broadcast that that's what's cool about these gyms. Your gym made a splash when you've been to different events and different uh, sites too, even though some people outside of Maryland probably doesn't, hasn't heard of it. So yeah. it's always exciting to kind of see and hats off. I mean, I, I'll give one more shout out, although I don't have any connection, although he did come to 247. Glover Tixera, the former oh, yeah. champ, you know, he created his own gym up in Connecticut for a guy that was from Brazil in Connecticut, but he's another guy. He came to coach and corner my opportunity to meet him, which was really cool. A guy who was O and O. He cornered at two four seven. Did he? He cornered at two four seven, and it gets better. He cornered at two four seven uh, about a year and a half ago, about two three months before he won his title fight. So this was going to his title fight. It was already booked. It was already going to happen, and he was at two four seven. But here's the crazy part: he was there all the way from Connecticut to corner an O and O debut amateur There's fighter. Two. That's so and, cool. and that's incredible to think about a guy who was just a couple months away from fighting for a world title that he won. Yeah. He, and I talked to him very, very briefly about it because obviously busy guy, but yeah. he, he sees a future in coaching and bringing along fighters, a yeah. guy at that level to take time to come down and coach a guy who's making it a, a amateur you as an amateur yeah. shows. Um, no money shows involved, the, no benefit. Yeah. That's oh yeah. Shows the level of, and it wasn't about him. I mean, yeah. it, it was it was almost like he wasn't in the audience. Like it should have been a bigger deal, but he was there to be a coach. So all the coaches that have that mindset, all the coaches that really care from whether they're an absolute beginner to an absolute world champ, I think that's the type of coaching that really makes a difference. You're one of those coaches. We could talk all night 
And I can't wait to see what happens August 6th. Best skills to you and take care. Thank you, Luke. Good to see you. You got it, bud. Thank you. You got it.